We were going to hand out some paper agendas. I printed these out before we left, uh, but the fact that we were still tweaking our presentation and editing some of the content up until um, today, uh, these are already no good. So I'm not going to hand out the paper copies because we're going to start uh, learning how to go with a paperless classroom. So we're going to do everything on the Chromebooks today and tomorrow, and hopefully we won't need to use paper at all. Okay. So, uh, for, those, for those of us that have uh, logins, who here logged on as guests as part of this district? Okay, let's go into the little wrench menu on the upper right-hand corner, and yeah, let's click on sign out or exit guest session. So for everyone that brought up the web pages already, when you first log in, the first one, The first one is our paper agenda, well, paperless agenda. Um, it goes through and tells you all the different sessions that we're going to have running till both today and tomorrow. And if you scroll down, if you scroll down to the bottom of the document, yep, should be on page three. We have a little table that shows you what sessions we think that everyone should uh, attend. And if you fit into multiple groups, such as if you're playing, you know, a person that wears the tech hat but also is a teacher, you know, you'll have to determine where you think you're going to be a good fit for what kind of information um, you'd like to learn. So the first session, fundamental, we're going to go through a lot of the basics. After this, we're going to split up. I'm going to do the tech side of things. And Michael's going to go into the Google Apps uh, side of the product. And then we're also going to be split up um, right after lunch for uh, Michael's going to go into tools for school use. And I'm going to handle administration and sort of change management uh, of how we're going to uh, roll out these Chromebooks. And then tomorrow, uh, Michael's going to be uh, presenting all morning. And we're going to just strictly be doing uh, things for the, for, with the teachers. Uh, collaboration. Tomorrow. Collaboration. Extensions that you can use in Chromebook, like Chromebooks. Okay. So everyone's okay, okay now? Everyone's in on their Chromebook? Mm -hmm. We're all up and running? Okay, it's a strong word. So hopefully, with the, with the Chromebooks, what we're going to try to start instilling is you know how to get up and running with a classroom where we're relying less on paper and more on the on this you know Chromebook technology just relying on the cloud using Google Docs for collaboration you know instead of taking paper notes using Google Docs to take our notes sharing them amongst one another uh, it's a lot of cool and exciting stuff we never used to be able to do things like this when we we're just using strict Microsoft Office and Word and things like that but you know, Google Docs and Google Sites now make this a real possibility. And you know, after we're done tomorrow, hopefully everyone will have a good idea of how you can use this in the classroom. Finally, the second tab. Actually, I should show this um, up on the screen here. The second tab, the second website that I brought up for everyone, and that one is here. Uh, this is Google Moderator. Michael's going to go into this product in detail. It's part of the Google Apps Suite. comes uh, completely free with uh, uh, the Chromebooks that we're going to be using. And this is a tool that we can use in the classroom for presenting topics to students and having the students really engage, and as well as staff members, and provide input um, on a number of different things. So the way that we're using it for our purposes here today is I have a Google Moderator session going. And one of the topics we're going to be able to plug uh, questions into and vote on them is uh, questions for Steve from Google. Uh, Michael, myself, and John, we're going to be uh, reaching out to Steve from Google. He's one of the uh, people from the Chromebooks pilot team. He's going to be able to answer any kind of questions that we come across that you know, we can't even provide an answer for. So I want to go ahead and collect any outstanding questions that we have after today, plug them in here, and we're going to present them uh, to Steve when we make the phone call. 
And the other one is a suggestions for day two uh, moderator topic in that uh, we want to find out what you liked about today, what you didn't like, and what you'd like to learn about more uh, tomorrow, any loose ends that we had after today. And the way this works, if you're on the moderator page, you can click on any of the topics on the left hand side. So either the questions for Steve or suggestions for day two. And if you click on the, the first one, so for example, questions for Steve, I already submitted a question here and asked uh, a little bit of a technical question. Why do the Chromebooks have difficulty staying connected to a particular type of wireless network? Um, and ideally, in the classroom, if you had some kind of uh, moderator session going like this, you'd be able to have kids submitting their own questions. So I went ahead and put mine in last night, but at the bottom of the screen, you'll see there where it says submit question. You can go ahead and use that, click on it, and type in any kind of question you have. So as we're going through all day today, you can refer back to this. If there's something that you bring up to us and we can't answer, go back to this moderator page, click on submit a question, and once you click on submit, it'll pop in here, and you can even go ahead and vote on the ones that you feel are more important than, than the others. If you don't like it, you can click on the red little X, or if you do like it, you can vote it up. Can you hold on one second there? For sure. Some of, I think some of, are you guys at the, when you first go to moderator for the first time, it's going to ask you for a nickname. Oh, uh, okay. Location. Okay. So just go ahead. You can put in. Looks like some people got past that. Yeah. Just unless go they ahead put in your first in. name and your, your do you have to go back there and do that? Uh, I don't think you have to if you clicked out of it, but if you're at that screen and or if it comes up later, you can just. How do you? Yeah, that problem. Oh, problem. And you owe me my money back. Yeah, right. Right. Anybody else would like Bob a mouse? Bob Michael. I'm good. You need a mouse? So Michael's going to handle a uh, moderator a little more in depth uh, later on today and tomorrow, but you can see where something like this would be useful. For example, if you're preparing for a test and you wanted to have quite kids uh, maybe two days before the review session go ahead onto a moderator page and submit questions for what they think should be covered in the review session. They can go ahead and vote them up and the most important questions obviously will be answered first and you just go, go down the line. And you can make as many moderator topics as you like and they get stored indefinitely so you can always even refer back to these things. You have a bunch of questions that were made for one year. You can go back the next year and refer back to that list and see if there's anything that you know still needs to be covered in that particular uh, this topic. This is just a little slide tech question. I'm assuming sure. moderator has to be turned on in Google Apps. Moderator does have to be turned on. Yes, okay. yes. So we'll go we'll go into that. But if your district doesn't have it turned on, then this might show as uh, it's, not being it's available. It's not coming up, but I can turn it on. Okay. So, okay. <clears throat> All right. So I just wanted to go over quickly um, our experience with Google Apps. We've been working with the product uh, since about 2008, uh, since we worked so closely with District 207 um, over in the Chicago, Illinois area. Uh, we were in a situation where we were using an old antiquated email system, uh, Noel GroupWise for anyone that's curious. Um, that was pretty much on its last leg and we had to make a decision on you know, what we were gonna do, what we were gonna go with. Uh, we made a big push and moved into uh, Google Apps, so now we have three high schools, two branch campuses, 1,500 staff, and nearly 7,000 students that are all using Google Apps on a daily basis. We use Gmail, Docs, Calendar on a near daily basis, um, and it works very well for us. Um, as you can see, uh, if we're curious about numbers, we saved about $35,000 on moving over to Google Apps compared to using our old antiquated uh, legacy system. So I think that was just the first year, right? Uh, yeah, that was just the first year, but the savings, you know, do could do add up over the years in terms of you know licensing that we have to have every single year from that company and, and things of that nature, and also systems we had to have keep running uh, in our district and you know, electricity and cooling for them and manpower to keep them up and running. Uh, that's all been blown out the window, and we've been using Google's product uh, now since 2008, and and we really enjoy it. Uh, we also do a lot of work uh, on our FireLogic side with the Park Ridge Public Library. Uh, we host monthly Google uh, Apps classes on the different products, uh, helping you know, the community and also some of the 
uh, people from the other school districts to come in and learn about the Google Apps products, get some exposure for it, and show them how they can use it in their daily lives, business lives, or uh, school professional lives. Um, we also help out um, organizations and businesses in our local community get moved over to apps uh, in the same way that we assist at the school district. Um, a lot of businesses are starting to use this product. FireLogic, our company, runs 100% on Google Apps as well. Um, and none of them have really looked back to their legacy software. I want to show a short video, uh, since everyone may be at a different level of uh, um, familiarity with the Chromebooks, I just want to show a short video of what the, the, this Chromebook um, experience, what this whole Chromebook um, device will allow us to do in the classroom. So actually I have the video queued up in this, uh, in this other tab here already, and you can just maximize it and play it. Just a short two minute Introducing video. Chromebooks for Education, a simple way to bring the power of the web into the classroom, manage school-wide sets of hardware, and keep students focused. For instance, Chromebooks leave more time for teaching by booting up in just eight seconds. That's less time than it takes to make a paper airplane. Even after entering sleep mode, they resume working immediately. And unlike most notebook computers, Chromebooks have a battery that lasts up to eight hours. So even at the end of a long school day, they're still going strong. Built-in Wi-Fi and optional 3G allow Chromebooks to connect to the web anytime, anywhere. Chromebooks are also built around a web browser, which means everything is stored online. Students and teachers can simply log on to any machine to access their emails, documents, and personal settings. So there are no more excuses for missing or incomplete homework. Without the need for constant software updates and yearly re-imaging, Chromebooks make it easy to provide each student with their own computer. Schools can manage an entire fleet of Chromebooks with just a few clicks. Administrators can configure and manage computers and user accounts via a web-based console. They can also control which web apps and extensions users can add. Chromebooks stay up to date with the latest features and fixes so IT managers can spend less time updating hardware and more time focusing on the important things. Integrated security provides multiple layers of protection that defends computers and the entire network from malware and viruses. The Chromebooks for Education program includes everything from the computers and operating system to updates, web-based management, and three years of extended warranty and support from Google. After three years, schools will receive a brand new set of Chromebooks, including service and support, and get to keep the original computers. At the end of the day, Chromebooks for Education enables schools to be more efficient in terms of classroom time, IT resources, and technology budgets, which ultimately leads to happier teachers, students, and parents. To find out more about getting Chromebooks for your school, visit google.com slash Chromebook slash education. That's a neat little two minute, uh, two minute video just giving you a, a, a quick in-depth look at you know, what the Chromebooks provide. A lot of that, uh, a lot of the way of looking at how these Chromebooks handle uh, the web and the administration side of things and also usage is a lot different than when, what we're used to. I know John said here we're still a heavy Windows district. We pay for a lot of licensing and you know laptops aren't very prevalent yet. Uh, but I think this will be a nice foray into the whole mobile uh, vision of commu computing for kids and allowing them to you know, go into the 21st century with a tool that really is built um, for you know, what kids need today. So 1911, you know, classroom was limited to the school walls. Uh, there was no such thing as computers back then. You know, all the learning happened right in the classroom. Uh, and now we're in 2011, and the classroom is increasingly on the web. We have digital textbooks, you know, the Kindle devices. Um, class websites and blogs are very popular now. Social media, obviously. You can't keep the kids off of uh, Facebook and Twitter. Um, and also the smartphones. The kids are on them all the time. Uh, you know, even if we have policies against you know, the kids having the smartphones in the classroom and, and not being able to do the different things that they do outside of the class, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, they're still not engaging in this, they're still not, you know, in this 21st century um, population where technology is prevalent in their, in their daily lives. Uh, this was a survey that was done in another school district. This is Leiden over in Illinois, um, another district that went um, with the Chromebooks. 
Um, and they did a very heavy rollout of these devices. Uh, before they did this, however, they went ahead and asked uh, their, uh, I believe this was the, the community at large, uh, if you're estimating, well, what, to what percentage of time are the kids working on the internet or web-based tools where they're on computers in school? And look, if you look at the uh, stats here, a resounding 90 to 100% uh, told us that uh, the kids are spending the majority of their time um, on the internet. So the internet is definitely a very heavy tool that is being used not only at districts like this, um, but ever more so increasingly uh, at your districts as well. So the whole goal here is that we want to prepare kids for their future and not our past. And that's why I think that you know, putting this kind of technology in their hands and giving them a chance to utilize the web for what it truly was made to do is a very good thing for them. I want to take a quick survey um, of everyone um, here. We have two districts uh, present as far as I know. Uh, well, the first thing is, what do you find most frustrating about the way that technology is used right now um, at your district? What are your biggest gripes or... Close your ears, Tom. <laughs> Don't take it personally. <laughs> well, I know for us, it's, 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 not, it's not a custom way we don't have enough tools for everyone to be able to use it. And then at the same time, we're not actually actualizing it probably the way that we should. Mm -hmm. What, what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, can you just give me an idea of what kind of computer systems we're using and laptop cards is just desktops? Laptop cards. Okay. Do you feel that they're, they fit your needs well or? Well, they do. I mean, students use them for you know, research, writing papers, things like that. But I know that we can go beyond that and we really haven't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any answers? Well, most of us using primarily just desktops and labs and classrooms, so the established way of using technology. I'll, I'll chime in because no, uh, I sit on the other side. You know, I'm the technology manager for my school. I'll probably relate to what Tony is doing, and it's even it's frustrating for me and my staff. You know, we have technology, but uh, you know we're struggling. We're just trying to get the basics going sometimes, and uh, you know we're spending all of our time and energy just trying to maintain things and keep things going. With something like the Chromebooks, you know, I wish we had, you know, carts of those instead of laptops because they would be much more efficient for us to use. Um, and, and less time for us to manage them, therefore we'd have more time to do the other things that we always have at the bottom of our list that we never quite get to. And one of the big problems is you get a load of new technology, a load of new Dell computers come in. I mean, how long does it take for those things to come from the box to actually get into a student's hands? You know, to be able to use it, it's you know at least a, yeah, we a have month a, or a little over a month process to get that all going. Yeah, we have a uh, we have a netbook program with our uh, we have a Title One program where every year we buy the freshmen. Uh, and it's it's a program that's got about a hundred students in it. Every year for the last three years, we've been buying netbooks from them from Dell as part of the grant. And uh, I have one employee that she spends over forty hours just. And, and that's not even unboxing them. I had, you know, get some of the kids to help us unbox them, but that's just setting them up. They all run Linux, so she's going to set them up, configure Linux, inventory them, you know, a lot of different things. Uh, and it just, you know, system principal asked me, well, when he's going to be ready? Well, it takes some time, you know. Uh, the only complaint I heard from the guy at Leiden, who's Leiden, really went into the Chromebooks is, you know, when is Google going to figure out how to get them unboxed automatically? <laughs> <laughs> and that really is the toughest part, yeah, is the unboxing one process. Of, one of the hardest parts, we saw some challenges here this morning, so it's not all perfect, but uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot more streamlined for the tech people. Which well, we've been laptops and just the startup time. That's the first thing they said. Mm -hmm. you know, our fifth grade has laptops, but to start them up mm -hmm. and shut them down, or even you know our classes that switch, they're 55 minutes and... That whole, yeah. That may need I mean, what are you losing on login time alone? Three, four minutes now? Yeah. Even the towers have that if you've got to log off and log mm -hmm. in. And, you mm -hmm. know, so exactly. I'm always spending my time trying to figure out how to make them start up quicker. Mm -hmm. and right. Some and ways you can't school, do that. <laughs> especially at the high school level, if your teachers are changing classrooms like ours, yeah. uh, then every time you go into a new classroom, you have to log in. Yeah, and our periods are 45 minutes, so if it takes five minutes to log in, you just yeah, lost the same. <laughs> 
don't want to lob, start lobbing grenades, but um, one of my frustration is um, if you ask who's willing to implement new technology, um, the huge majority of staff said, no, we're doing fine. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that. Really? Yo, well, good grief, Joy. You came in to me at the last minute and said, okay, let's write this grant. <laughs> no, I, I went to Mrs. Stryer long before I came to you. But, yeah. but, but like for, oh, just, I had pushed out an email to the high school principal and said, hey, we're willing to write this grant, but I need four teachers to collaborate mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. Didn't hear anything about it, didn't hear anything about it. And so there must have been, I don't know if it was resistance or people just didn't want to play along or whatever. And literally, Joy came in to me the Friday before this grant application was due and said, I think it got four teachers together. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that email had been out for a month or longer as far. So we were rushing, to, and, and I guess, uh, uh, and I, really these four are not the issue. I'm talking about just as a whole, that many of the staff, if they're saying, okay, we can go through and continue to invest $200,000 in textbook this year or invest $200,000 in technology, mm -hmm. they'll say, ah, we'll just do the textbooks. Mm -hmm. But isn't that because most of us are digitally immigrants and, and yeah. we're kind of like, the old dog and the digital natives were like a little afraid of that. And yeah, yeah. Well, and this is what I'm going to go into in the administration yeah. session um, later today, and that people naturally are afraid of new tech. People are naturally, you know, have a resistance to it because you know a lot of times there is um, a problem with, you know, having acceptance of new technology. There's a problem with, um, you know, users knowing that. A lot of times when new tech comes along, it doesn't always suit their needs. So sometimes having that known, having that technology that you already have, you know, that you're comfortable with is a lot of times better than something that you've never even used. So there, there, there is that natural resistance, and that's a part of the process that we have to overcome um, in dealing with something like these Chromebooks. Because uh, this is definitely is, you know, very new compared to, you know, sitting on desktop computers that are, you know, sitting in a lab and having Chromebooks where students are going to be taking them home, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is definitely... Uh, I mean, I know change is hard. Change is hard. Well, <laughs> and in defense yeah. of the teachers, the mm -hmm. things we've done previously haven't run smoothly. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah. they've caused hassles in the classroom, and sometimes I can't blame them. It's easier just to skip it yeah. than to fight with this not where, you know, it just, and it does look like these are going to be a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. But they've had, you know, past... Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, as much as it's, it's just a tool, it shouldn't be the end all be all. It's, it's, and it's always that, that be, one You know, you never worry about your whiteboard one. working or not working. <laughs> you know, it's tried and true technology. Like like maybe, 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 maybe you run out of ink and you know, your pen dries up or something like that. I think another reason why we're just so timid to get started, and maybe this is just me, but I'm certain that it's probably not. We are crammed with do this, teach this, teach this, teach this. We got to get this taught. You know, the kids have to have all of this stuff for all of their end of course exams. So now, this is an excellent thing, and we are, I think, <laughs> for the most part, excited about it. Um, but it's just one more thing that we have to learn to reteach them on how. You know, it's just redoing everything, which is very exciting. Um, in the back of my mind, it's extremely exciting to have some new tool to teach them, but I think it's just one more thing that is is on us to do. Mm -hmm. And with with everything, and, and and I think I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this this makes it more exciting for the kids, yeah. and and that it does become easier on us, you know, to teach using these. I, yeah. I, think I we got another little video I'm going to show that's from another district that's. No, we using these Chromebooks and you'll see some of the statements that the kids are making and even the teachers are making in terms of, you know, how this has improved, how this has truly helped, you know, the classroom environment. Um, and part of the process with these Chromebooks um, has to do with, you know, you all getting the Chromebooks first, getting experience with them, because if we just go ahead and drop these on students' desk and then drop them on your desk first day of class, obviously things aren't going to be working well. Things, you know, you're not going to be prepared to use them. You're not going to know how to integrate it, uh, you know, within your classroom. So, getting this time to uh, work on these devices before the students are handed them on the first day of school is, is definitely the best way to do this. So, I'm really glad that you guys are very enthusiastic with, you know, at least giving this a try and and and, and get your hands and getting down and dirty with uh, uh, with these devices first. Uh, second thing I wanted to ask uh, the two districts that are here in, uh, in attendance. How central do you believe that the web is becoming uh, in, in the kids' education today? Which 
should be. It should be. Very <laughs> central. Be. 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 They are using it. Mm -hmm. yeah, people are using it. I was at a meeting last night, asked a question, and somebody immediately pulls up their start, smartphone and tells me the rating of the movie, where I can buy it, and everything <laughs> like that. I mean, so it... So, so the kids it, are using it yeah, for... it is part of our lives. We mm -hmm. don't say, I'm going to go pick up the encyclopedia and look something mm -hmm. up. We say, I'm going to Google that. I mean, it, it's become a verb. So whether it's central to our learning and, and how we teach students, mm -hmm. it is central to their learning. Mm -hmm. And that's a kind of sort of a gap that we need to bridge, you know, what the kids are doing, what the kids are know about this technology in, in their own personal lives, and what we're teaching in the classroom, you know, at least what Michael and I feel, and a lot of other districts feel the same way, is that, you know, there is this gap. The technology is here, you know, the way we're learning is here, and we haven't, you know, bridged that gap yet appropriately. Um, and part of the reason is because we just haven't had the proper devices to do so. I mean, computer labs are great, but, you know, are they going to are they going to work as well as a device that a student has with them all day long that they can use in any class and take home with them to have a seamless experience? I think this is really the first time uh, that we've seen something uh, of this nature. Uh, and then just a quick question in terms of your own personal usage: Who here has used a Chrome web browser? Majority of people here. Okay. And the few of you that haven't, uh, Internet Explorer or Firefox. Okay. Okay. One of the big selling points that Google pushes on these Chromebooks, um, but is you know is actually a very very large truth, is the fact that there is a very little learning curve uh, for students that are going to be using this uh, device as well as yourselves. If you've used the Chrome web browser, even if you haven't, Chrome is very easy to use. But it's a seamless experience across any of the devices you may have used previously. So if you're on a Windows machine, or if you've used it on a Mac, Chrome's the same, as well as how it looks on the Chromebook. So I am fairly certain that the kids have at least heard of Chrome, or probably have experience with it already. So when you're going to drop this on them, and they're going to start using it, I don't think it's going to be a learning curve like the first time they had to start using Windows, or start learning how to use Mac. I think this experience is a lot easier. There's a lot less glitches that uh, go along with the process. It's pretty much, you know, they don't even have to worry about how the inner workings of the system work. They don't have to worry about anything besides remembering their login and knowing where they need to go for class activities as soon as the computer comes up. It's pretty much a web browser as soon as you log in. I mean, you are pretty much being dumped right into uh, the learning environment uh, as soon as they get started. One of the big issues that we hear uh, being discussed, and it's a you know very valid concern, is in terms of security. You know, how secure is the cloud? How secure is doing everything that we do on the online classroom uh, within Chrome? And actually, uh, there was a company that went out and did a little read, uh, comparison in terms of the different internet browsers that there are: Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome. Uh, these are just different windows to the internet, and they found out that actually Chrome is by far. Uh, the most secure platform to do this. Uh, they said that it is indeed the most secure uh, platform against attack. Uh, they have a more thorough and comprehensive way of everything that uh, is structured in terms of how the browser handles attacks online and viruses and things of that nature. Uh, so I think this is just a little bit of reassurance for those that might still be wary in terms of, you know, is this the right device for, you know, taking our digital classroom uh, full blast? You know, we personally think it is. Google thinks it is. Uh, and I, I think you should have a little bit of comfort in terms of, um, you know, Google's been working on not only their Chrome product for a few years now, they've had their Google Apps suite in effect for more than a few years. Um, many school districts have already adopted this technology. Uh, we have federal government agencies that are already running on Google Apps as well, uh, cities, uh, police departments. So it's a very, very secure platform. Um, and I don't think it has a lot of those loopholes that a lot of traditional software has, you know, vulnerable to a virus attack, vulnerable to, you know, all the different error messages and prone to all those issues that we know about, that we, you know, just frustrate us about, you know, normal traditional Windows and Mac OS um, technology. Um, so the one thing I will ask is, uh, you know, definitely have an open, you know, open ears and open eyes um, uh, for this product and, and let's see what we can make of it. Uh, go ahead and play this. This is one, one other video. This is from a 
try uh, try going up to the top here, Michael. Upper left, and I think maybe we have a problem because I just lost my connectivity to Google. But you're wired, aren't you? Yeah, we're we're wired. wired. Let me try one quick thing here. Can we get that password really quickly? This is another district, um, I believe, in the California area that went uh, with Chromebooks. And they had some very interesting things to say. That We have staff students and also, I believe, also as an IT administrator. Um, and they all chime in with their opinion of what they think about the uh, Chromebooks. Okay, we'll just play it from here. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Kim. <clears throat> oh, the video I was re referencing is a, is a different one, but um, this is actually a student-produced um, video. Uh, this is the, the Khan Academy. These students are ones that are already using this on a daily basis. Uh, it's just a fun little video of uh, you know, how they're using it on a daily basis. So I'll go ahead and play this really quickly. I see. And this is how we use the Chromebooks for Khan Academy. This is Buddy, where we keep the Chromebooks. Marston, what do you like about the Chromebooks of Khan Academy? Um, I like the Chromebooks because you can choose whatever you would like to work on. Cool. Abraham, what do you like about Khan Academy with the Chromebooks? Well, what I like about Khan Academy is that you can watch a video to help you get through a lesson if you don't understand it, or your teacher is unavailable to help you. Awesome. Haley, what do you like about the Chromebooks of Khan Academy? I don't like them. I love them. <laughs> These are the live stats where we can see how good we're doing. These are all the students. And that's how we do it at Grace Lutheran School. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and we're all ducking for cover. So the one side of it is the, are the teachers and administrators, and I was going ahead and on the research that we were doing in, on this to see, you know, what was the consensus, what kind of issues were people having. Uh, we ran into some interesting things. Uh, one person here, an IT director, said that. Um, Part of the reason the Chromebooks are working so well for them is because that they can go ahead and put more of more computers in the classroom finally. And you know, a big problem, and you know, we are very familiar with this, and that the more computers you roll out to classes and to labs, you know, the more computers that you have to manage. I think the Chromebooks really turn that idea on its head because there isn't very much to manage. You know, as soon as that Chromebook is given to the student, as long as they have a proper login, you know, they're pretty much up and running. There's no software that needs to be maintained. You know, there's just a few settings that need to be controlled on the back end uh, by the people that are handling the tech side of things. But other than that, the devices merely just work. Uh, another uh, user here, a teacher, actually said that we have moved to a more interactive-based model uh, where the students are actually required to think independently. They're creating, collaborating. Um, it's definitely a better model for learning. Another teacher said that uh, there's an increase in personal investment, which also goes ahead and increases achievement uh, uh, for the students. And a tech supervisor uh, here said that uh, they took the walls and we blew them away. Uh, pretty much that you know that gar walled garden approach that used to be intact, you know, with the traditional lab and laptop cart um, setting. And here's also a few quotes from students uh, that I read online from uh, different videos and different uh, postings from districts. Uh, it's very nice to collaborate with each other and use the conversation chat. Uh, what Alyssa's referring to is Google Docs. There's a nice way where students can uh, collaborate and also uh, chat with one another as they're working on a document. So there's embedded chat uh, within any document that they're using. And Michael's going to go into that actually in depth in the next session with, uh, with all the teachers. Um, gives us an open access to different applications such as Google Moderator. That's that product that we were showing off earlier today where we're going to be entering those questions in and voting on them. Uh, Elliot said that all my assignments are organized and I can easily send them to my teachers. 
How are we traditionally handling papers and things that students are doing uh, on the computer? We're always printing them out, right? Everything has to be printed and handed in. Well, with the Chromebooks, now it's possible to merely go ahead, create their content, and share it out with their teacher digitally. Teacher logs into their account at, on the Chromebook, and they're going to get all those documents all shared out with them virtually. You can organize them. You truly don't even have to have a printer uh, <laughs> anywhere in the process. And Sarah said that I can get in, I can get out, get done, and work more efficiently with the people around me. And, and, and that's a, a common trend of things we're hearing with the Chromebooks. Um, because, you know, traditionally in a lab environment, you know, the kids, if they're working together, what do they have to do? They have to sit down working a PowerPoint presentation on a single computer. Or you have people that are, you know, one person's working on your PowerPoint presentation or Excel spreadsheet, email it to me. Let me work on it. The other person works on it. You send it back off the other person, and we just have this chain going on. Well, Google Docs, Google Apps, they took that barrier, they took it down, and everyone's working collaboratively together, all in one environment, all right on the Chromebooks. Uh, so, in terms of the Chromebooks themselves, you know, what are the advantages uh, of the device itself? One of the greatest things that we already showed was that quick startup time. Even our best Windows machines or Mac machines, we're still talking about you know, close to a minute, minute and a half before we can even start to begin clicking on programs that we want to use. With the Chromebooks, Google advertises about an eight second startup time. From our experience and from the real world experience, it's about 10 seconds. I still think that's pretty good compared to what we're used to. <clears throat> Battery life is also excellent, eight hours. And actually I have been testing this, I've been using this uh, for a few days uh, solely as my primary machine and I've gotten about seven and a half, eight hours from a normal work day. I'm not talking about just letting the unit sit on a desk and not do anything, I'm talking about being on the internet, doing things, collaborating, using wireless, all that good stuff. So that is pretty much a full school day for anyone. Even our best laptop carts that we've worked with uh, at, our, at the District 207, I mean, teachers have to plug them in pretty much every period because you know, after about two hours or so, that battery is, is drained on them. So, that's not going to be an issue any longer. Uh, in terms of total cost of ownership, uh, more from a uh, dollars and cents sort of view, uh, for the tech people in the crowd, we all know that all the PCs and the Apple systems that we have out in usage, uh, there's a lot that goes into that total cost of ownership. You know, we have the hardware that we purchase, the virus protection, all the licensing costs for all the software, the management side of it, Microsoft Office, it all adds up to a lot of money and a lot of time. Uh, with the flat fee, I know these all came part of the grant, um, but ideally for a district that just purchases them outright out of their own funds, uh, in the same manner, Google sends you the Chromebooks, you get for either one or three years uh, the ability to control them uh, through your management console, and John's been working in there a little bit, um, and, uh, as well as uh, ourselves. Uh, and you can pretty much do everything through that console. At the end of that time, if you choose to continue having them under the subscription plan, uh, there's a, uh, it's about $5 per device per month, which is pretty cheap compared to how, how much it costs to run a, uh, keep a normal system up and running. Um, and you can decide to keep using this uh, device indefinitely. If not, Google says you can keep the device. You won't get management uh, for it through the Google Apps console, but you can put it like in a library and have kids just check it out. It'll be just like a normal laptop they can use uh, since it's still fil filtered on the internet. It's you know, a safe device that they can use for basic internet browsing, email, and get their work done for themselves. Uh, as I already said, less maintenance time. Uh, another nice thing is updates. How do we get traditional systems updated? Well, it's a big process of taking them down, putting new software on, reconfiguring them. Things don't go as planned always, so there's systems that don't make it through that process. Uh, that's all tossed out the window because the Chromebooks, uh, there's nothing the kids have to worry about. The system is always updated uh, when it goes ahead and it, it, it checks its software when the student logs in. So the Chromebook is opened up, the students or staff are logging into it, and it's checking for updates and pulling those down automatically. Part of the problem is on the tech side, uh, this might create a little bit of an issue in terms of how much internet pipe it's going to start using up, and that's a question that we won't be able to answer until these things get in the hands of all the students. Uh, there's no way, I'm going to get into this in the tech session, so I won't want to drag on it, um, but we'll address the whole issue of, of internet speed and, and how that's going to affect that. 
Uh, as I said, there's very easy management through the Google Apps console for all the devices, as well as all the student accounts. Um, and the other nice part is that Google provides direct support for the entire period that these are warranted through them. So um, Google says that you know if it's user damage and you know kid obviously drops it, cracks it, breaks it, that's not technically covered under that. Um, but if it's you know, manufacturer defects, small issues that come up. Uh, general usability, software problems, they have a uh, 800 number you can call 24 hours a day and they have very good support actually. I've talked to them many times and their technical team is pretty uh, Johnny on the spot with these um, devices. <clears throat> there are a few downsides. I'm not going to say that these things are the uh, you know, greatest gift to mankind. There are a few things that you know, we found out through talking with other districts, doing some research on them, and you know, from our own usage. Uh, one of those things is the fact that uh, there is a Microsoft Office. So for people that truly have carved out you know, lesson plans or, or things that they need that Microsoft Office suite for, you know, custom functions that Office provides, heavy number crunching for maybe some of the heavier science or math classes, um, you can't get Office. You can't get any kind of traditional Windows software on these devices. You know, science departments a lot of times have custom kind of probeware that they use. Uh, with their computers, you can't do that with these. So you really have to, you know, figure out and decide with what you're doing, what kind of, um, you know, lesson material you have. You know, can you get by with using applications that are only on the web? And, and you'll be able to figure this out after, you know, tomorrow. And after you you figure out everything you can do, you'll see what your limitations are, and you'll have to carve out, you know, the way you use your, the Chromebooks uh, from that point forward. Printing. This is a big challenge with the Chromebooks. Um, I'm going to go deeper into this in a tech session with those that are going to be there. Um, but printing is, is a big challenge with these. Google says that they have this cloud print product available uh, for the Chromebooks. And while, in theory, cloud print does work as advertised, it's very clumsy. You either have a printer that is capable of doing this kind of cloud print, or you have to have a Windows, traditional Windows machine that's set up and running all day, connected to a regular printer um, that allows you to share that printer out with all your students. Um, and there's a few more steps that go into it. I'm going to say for advertising purposes, don't count on doing a lot of printing from these devices. It's going to be, it's going to be a tough thing to get going. Um, and it's not, I don't think it's going to be feasible uh, for a whole classroom or classes of kids that are using Chromebooks, um, at least right now. This may change, it may get easier. I hope it gets easier to do, but for now, Google is really hands off with the whole printing aspect of things. Yes? Um, now I've read online that these will work with like Citrix, um, where you Zen app or something like that, where you're using like a, a web browser to access a like, Microsoft yeah. Office. Yeah, you can do, you can do the remote um, of option. There are a few apps that allow that. They're all still in what they call the beta form, so they're all they're still testing stages. Uh, you can do that, but in terms of having students do that on a mass basis, I don't think that's very feasible unless you have a very easy way to set that up. So I, I'm really hoping that Google makes it easier to do printing, even though we don't want to have, you know, keep instilling this notion of printing. Uh, I know a lot of districts and a lot of people do depend on this still. Chromebooks are going to have a tough time. One of the other downsides is that you need a constant, um, Internet connection. One of the things with the 3G and John and I and Michael, we've talked a little bit about this. The whole 3G aspect of you know having the kids working on internet provided by Google um, on the Chromebooks at any time, even when they're at home, uh, it's definitely doable. Um, but the process for that is also a little bit uh, flaky, and I'm going to go into the details about that. Um, but indeed, that is one of the downsides because if you don't have a internet connection of some sort, if the Verizon 3G access is down or not working, um, or Wi-Fi is having issues and these Chromebooks are a little picky with Wi-Fi uh, from our experience, um, the kids are going to have some issues. And that is, that is one of the overwhelming uh, gripes that we've heard with the devices is that if your Wi-Fi isn't strong, if you don't have wireless boxes put up uh, that are capable of handling this many laptops in classrooms, uh, the kids may get frustrated uh, with the wireless. But this is, again, something we won't know until classes start using them here at the district and your district uh, in a full-time basis. And the final thing that uh, is great for me, but you know, maybe a lot of other people may not care, but no optical drive. 
uh, just like the iPad, just like a lot of other slim uh, tablets and, and smaller laptop devices. Uh, the Chromebooks don't have an optical drive, so you can't watch any DVDs. Uh, I know there's not as much of that kind of textbook software that's on the discs as it used to be. A lot of that's moving online, but some of that older stuff you still have, you can only get access on a disc. So um, that you'll have to resort to using your traditional Windows machines for still. So this is one of the few, few of the things that you need to keep in mind with what the Chromebook still cannot do for us. Uh, some of the basics, I'm not going to uh, dwell on the slide too much. Uh, they're very light, actually. If you've picked up the Chromebook itself, uh, you notice that I actually compared it this morning with uh, Michael's iPad. It's not much heavier than an iPad uh, if you've held one of those. So uh, and the fact that you're getting a full-size keyboard, I think, is is very neat. You know, a lot of netbooks, if you've anyone use netbooks uh, here, uh, not at all. Uh, but the netbooks have very small keyboards. A lot of kids complain they're too cramped. You can't type on them well. This is nearly like a full-size laptop keyboard that's actually a 12-inch screen. So it's, it's the best of both worlds, really, in terms of portability, uh, but still having that comfort that a lot of kids and a lot of you know, older people like to have as well. Uh, the instant on, the 10-second boot time, I, I told everyone about that already. Um, they're very durable as well. I mean, yes, they can probably still break. They're not made like the you know, laptops the police use or anything of that nature. Uh, but they're still very durable. There's not many parts that you can take off or remove. or I don't know if there's anything you can pull off of here. So really the only way that this is going to break is if it's put in a backpack. I heard I read online that a lot of kids are having issues if they put a lot of books in their bag, which the reason the Chromebooks shouldn't have that many books anymore. Um, but... The kids are dropping the backpacks and cracking the screens on the Chromebooks, um, but that's something, you know, have to figure out a solution for in terms of maybe some kind of cases uh, or something. <coughs> they all have speakers. You can use headphones so you can listen to any kind of videos or online training material that you're doing on them. Uh, so you definitely have that option. You can use your projector if, you, if the uh, technology allows it, if you can plug into the projector input. Um, they have a little <coughs> adapter. You can't do this with the iPad as easily, but they do have a little adapter for the Chromebook where you can plug this into the little expansion slot they have hidden here, and you can project everything you're doing on the Chromebook. So maybe it might be uh, ideal to maybe plug one of these in and show all the students in real time you know, how to go through the initial sign-in process and, and give them a little uh, overview of the Chromebook. You can connect it to your projector and show them you know, exactly what's going on or further down the road. Uh, you can go ahead and plug in flash drives into this. While you can't use disks, flash drives do work. Now, if your flash drive has you know, things on it that uh, needs traditional Windows or a Mac operating system to run, it will not function. But simple document files you can't open, simple multimedia, uh, most uh, major audio and video formats you are allowed to play right, natively right on the Chromebook. So that is, is still an option for anyone that wants to do that. Uh, they can also plug in uh, media cards if you're doing anything with digital cameras in the classroom. Uh, they have an uh, SD card slot, I'm pretty certain. It's in the very front, yeah. Oh, <laughs> there we go. SD card slot right on the front that they can use and plug in camera cards and take their photos and import them into documents, put them onto uh, Picasa and all the other you know, photo sharing websites, things of that nature. Uh, the Chromebooks run entirely on wireless, as I said. There's no option to plug these into any kind of wired internet connection. Um, they have the 3G, which is still a touchy topic. We'll get into that next session. Um, and as I said, the full-size keyboard, which is a nice, happy medium. <clears throat> One thing you'll notice about the keyboard and the Chromebooks is that uh, they're a little different. If you look at all the keys, towards the top of the keyboard, and I highlighted them up here on the screen for you. Everything below the top row of keys should be a traditional keyboard, minus the Windows key, obviously. Um, but you have buttons that are made for how the kids are going to be using these Chromebooks. So besides the traditional escape key, you'll see that there is a front and back key, so a dedicated key to going back and forth on websites that they visit, applications they're using on the web. Uh, we have a little refresh button if the kids need to reload their page. There's a full screen um, button if they go ahead and, and, and minimize a particular uh, uh, browser tab. I don't know you'll be using that very much. Um, and also you can go ahead and switch between multiple screens. So just like on your Windows computer, you can have multiple sessions of Internet Explorer or sessions of Chrome running so you can toggle between more websites at a single time. You can do the same thing 
on the Chromebook as well. You can have three, four, five different sessions of Chrome running with all kinds of different apps or, or parts of your lesson all loaded up for yourself. Can I make a comment? Yes. Um, notice that where the, the new <coughs> tab key is, notice there's no cap locks key. They took out the cap locks key. So you can't yell at people on email. <laughs> but actually, I think it's shift tab or yeah. There's some there's some key combo now the way for to engage the cap cap box. Box. But that is in that that actually they replaced the new tab key, so kids can open up new tabs within the same window for themselves uh, very easily. And the other nice thing is that the touchpad is very large on these. You know, unlike some of the netbooks that we've been dealing with, which have a very small and you don't have much room to move your finger around on um, these. Uh, Chromebooks have a very large and almost MacBook-like touchpad, and the bottom portion of it is actually what we use uh, um, for the uh, mouse button itself. So one large button, um, and most likely going to lead to less issues because a lot of kids, um, some of the more destructive ones that we've come across, like to pull or, or smash in those buttons. But you know, I think they'll be a lot less uh, willing to do so, seeing that it's just one large pad that they're dealing with. So hopefully we will see less damage on devices like this uh, once they get in the hands of students. Uh, just a little basics about the interface uh, of the Chromebook. What you see on the screen here, what you're seeing, you know, obviously we have already websites open that you're using, but that home screen is pretty much the interface. This is the desktop for all the students. Uh, so just like the Chrome browser, we have this bar up here, which is which Google calls the Omni Box, and what that is is one place where you can go ahead, go directly to websites. You can search for pretty much anything, not only from Google but from any other search provider. Uh, you can search between all the different apps they have installed on the Chromebook. Um, Google Chrome also has suggested search terms, so it'll predict what the student's typing. If the student starts typing for Lincoln, you know, it might bring up the town of Lincoln. Uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln, all the different relevant search terms that you know, might be uh, uh, best for that particular time. And it also starts to search the bookmarks uh, that the student has. One of the greatest things, um, and I know I don't, didn't want to focus on this, but one of the greatest things uh, is that the students can go ahead and build their own bookmark collections now. And no matter if they log onto this Chromebook or your Chromebook, they have their bookmarks come up on any device that they log into. So this was always a big problem with you know, traditional Windows machines in that students couldn't really make bookmarks for themselves. They had to kind of store their bookmarks, you know, maybe in text files or write them down in email or something. Now they can truly make themselves bookmarks, have their own little bookmark bar of websites that they like to access, set up their own homepage if we allow it. Um, so you know, that seamless browsing experience is, is finally coming to life for us. Uh, some of the other things about the, the basic interface here, um, the tab bar, as you open up different websites, you'll have tabs start showing. So this is our home tab, and every single other website that it's opened up has a new tab. So you can, kids can seamlessly work, and you can have open multiple different things at one time in your email, your Google Docs, CNN.com, a YouTube video that you're playing, all these different things without having to toggle between the traditional, okay, what window was it in? What window was that? You know, particular website. Uh, the status icons they show very simple. Kids, all they need to know is how much battery life they have and what the status of their wireless connection is. And it also shows uh, the time on there as well for them. So very simple. You know, they don't have all those status icons that we have on our Mac systems and our Windows systems with a bazillion different things that are running at any given time. The basics are here, and that's all the kids really need. Uh, this screen here in the middle here. Uh, before you have any websites open, it'll always show you. Um, there's an option to either show what you had recently open or all the different apps that are available uh, for the district. And this is something uh, that we'll go over further in, in later sessions in terms of you know, how this works between what apps are and what extensions are. Uh, these are just a, just a few things that um, differentiate you know, how the Chromebook works and how traditional Windows and, and Mac systems work. And then traditional navigation buttons, which everyone's familiar with already, uh, going back for and all that, which is duplicated right on the keyboard as well. Uh, just a little quick introduction to Google Apps. Some of you are familiar with it, some of you aren't. 
Google Apps is this overarching, the, the sort of manage, management side and, and the thing that brings together the functionality and the collaboration part of the Chromebooks. Um, it's one, and the back end is a place where we can manage all the different accounts for the students. We can tell the program what different um, apps they have access to. If we don't want them having Gmail or email access, we can turn that off. If we don't want calendar, we can turn that off for them. And you can turn that on, turn it off at any time uh, that you'd like. Uh, we can have multiple people that are in the system and handling the different settings. Uh, that's something we'll talk in, about in the tech session in terms of who's going to have their hands in here, how we're going to be managing um, the whole uh, technical side of it. Um, but it is possible now for teachers to truly have access and determine what their kids are getting when they log into their Chromebooks uh, for their classroom. So there is finally now a chance for teachers to be able to be part of the whole management side of, uh, of, of technology. And it's very simple to do. It's not very hard at all. I mean, if, if you've you know, ever worked in uh, you know, any kind of simple uh, you know, web-based interface, uh, you'll be right at home uh, with how Google Apps handles it. And there's, uh, Michael's going to go into how all these different products work, but um, Google Apps consists of just a few different products that are considered the core apps of the suite. Um, Gmail, um, I know that in terms of email here at the district, we're using uh, Legacy Microsoft product, John, mm -hmm. if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, you've been using Gmail just a little bit, I yeah. know. Um, maybe we'll be able to change that and uh, you know, get everyone introduced to Gmail. Um, District 207, where we do a lot of work. Um, everyone uses Gmail now, all staff, all students. Uh, it's a very nice system. Uh, in terms of e how many email issues we see on a consistent basis, uh, very minimal. Besides login problems um, and a few issues with attachments being blocked, it's really a pretty seamless uh, product. Uh, calendar, if we decide to start using that, uh, Mike's, Michael's going to show how we can use calendar for scheduling things, putting up assignment due dates, things of that nature. Uh, Google Docs is the alternative to Microsoft Office, so this is pretty much Office on the web. Kids can use it at home, kids can use it in the library, right on their Chromebooks, anywhere they are. They don't have to be sitting in front of the lab machine that have the full Microsoft Office suite loaded up by the school. They have that power anywhere they go now. Uh, in Google Sites, that's going to be more of a topic for tomorrow. Michael's going to go into with the teachers. And this is sort of a uh, tool that allows pretty much anyone to create a, a website with it. Actually, our FireLogic company website is built 100% on Google Sites. It's a totally free website creation tool uh, that allows you to share assignments, post a, a classroom blog. Uh, kids can go ahead and create their own sites as well to show off work, maybe a digital portfolio of theirs for a uh, project they've been working on. There's a lot of things you can do with Google Sites, and, and Michael will go into that a little further. And that's not the end of it, because there's a whole marketplace for apps uh, that we can have. There's things for doing um, uh, citing references to help students with that, uh, EasyBib. Uh, there's all kinds of online video and, and picture editors now available. If, if you, th you know, if you think about it, pretty much anything that we could do on a Windows machine there is an option for in the Google Marketplace um, for things that you can turn on. And a lot, the greatest part about it is a lot of it is totally free. There are some things that are paid for, obviously, um, but there's a lot of great free tools that you can turn on for the kids uh, that will maybe not 100% duplicate, but probably give them 80 to 90% of the functionality that they're used to on older systems. Um, so currently, you know, how we're using technology at, you know, in school districts, is we're tied to software that's only available in our computer labs. Uh, we're like, collaborating and, and utilizing technology around strict school schedules and, and, and schedules of what labs are open and what machines are available. Uh, and kids may or may not have access at home to computers. You know, some uh, districts where you know kids have more access to technology in the home, it's not as big of an issue. But uh, you know, for for districts where you know kids are going to be solely relying on the Chromebook as their main platform. Um, I think it's going to really allow them to, you know, take the classroom home and, you know, not have that strict division of when they're out of the classroom and when they're in the classroom. So Google Apps allows us to really collaborate and learn anywhere we go, uh, have that similar experience everywhere. Uh, and we're really considering the browser as the portal uh, to the wealth of knowledge uh, that's out there known as the cloud, known as the, the Internet at large. 
Uh, some of the biggest things that go into getting these Chromebooks out to students and, and having this program out on a large basis, uh, and there are a few things that, that we need to keep aware of, is that uh, there are going to be limitations. Things like the hardware problems that I talked about, uh, we're going to need some patience, there's going to need to be some resolve here. Uh, all the different districts that went to Chromebooks, you know, none of them went entirely as planned, none of them were 100%. It definitely is a, a, a you know, very new process in terms of you know, how we think about technology and how kids are finally utilizing that technology. Um, but you know, if we're able to look past that and able to you know, just be cognizant of it, I think we can you know, overcome that hurdle. And, and the same thing is uh, <clears throat> visible in terms of the software. As I said, we don't have access to that traditional Windows software on these machines. Printing is still an issue uh, when it comes to the Chromebooks. We just have to be aware of it and figure out how to get around these, uh, these speed bumps for ourselves. Uh, and, and user adoption. You know, there, there may be uh, issues with you know, not everyone picking these devices up as easily right from the get-go, right off the bat, um, as others. You know, maybe some kids are more comfortable with technology like this than others. Um, but you know, that user buy-in, which I'm going to go over in the admin session, um, is going to have to trickle down from you all first. I mean, the teachers really have to be invested in these Chromebooks in order for the students to really care about them. And, and once you start showing them and start you know, giving them examples and, and start leading in the classroom um, with these devices and, and showing the kids that you know, finally that they are in charge of all the content and they are, can be in charge of all the you know, collaboration and techniques that, that you're showing them, um, I think they're going to start finally start caring. And as that video showed us from Khan Academy, you know, those kids uh, you know, are, are pretty well engaged with the devices. They really like using them. And this is, this is sort of the same thing that resonates in all the other districts that I've uh, talked to and, and did some research on, is that you know, once we get, become, uh, get over those initial hurdles and finally grasp the technology that's been given to us here, um, I think it really will open up a whole new world for everyone. So as I, as I said at the bottom there, it is a new journey for everyone. Let's go ahead and make sure we celebrate all the successes um, and realize that issues aren't just speed bumps, they're not true roadblocks for getting done what we want to get done. Um, I guess I'll open the floor to any questions, any comments right off the bat, uh, anything that we've come across, any content that I've gone over uh, here in the fundamentals that wasn't clear, uh, let's get all the questions out there and as I said I want to build that repository for things that not even we can answer so we can pass that off to Google uh, later today in our conference call so we can come back tomorrow and give you a clear answer for them. Anything? How long have you been using Google Apps as your primary software like for things like word processing spreadsheets things like that in your district I will be completely honest that in our district um, I won't say this is hundred percent for everyone mm -hmm. but at least myself and most of my colleagues we don't even think about going into office first anymore mm -hmm. I mean we are going into Google Docs I mean you, you tell someone I'm gonna make a doc out of that I'm making a Google Doc or I'm making a Google spreadsheet because I know that I need to share that with someone. I need that. I can't have that content trapped in a Word document that's sitting on my computer. That is information that most of the time I need to be sharing with someone else um, because. You so know, we're talking a long time. You've been doing this. We've been using it. Um, well, students have students have had access to it for one whole year before the staff had it. Uh, so they were using it back in 2008 already, for the start of 2008 school year. Uh, we've been using it since uh, what was it? Spring of 09 already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so whenever you have, obviously you've got a culture here where you're working around docs as your primary you know, software, yes. for example, as word processing. Mm -hmm. When you have new students move to your district, what type of challenges do you meet with new students that are completely alien? To, cause that's sort of where we're going to be starting at, I've got a feeling. We're going to have students here that have no, I mean, I shouldn't say no, because our students, as in every school district, they know every workaround around every workaround around every firewall ever whatever and they have because we've opened up Google have mm -hmm. already found a lot of things that I imagine would surprise even the classroom <laughs> teachers but um, uh, 
when you have a new student move to the district or when you hire new staff that move to the mm -hmm. district they're completely alien how do you handle that when Johnny comes in from Buffalo Missouri to enroll in the main high school up there how do you handle that culture transition for those new kids do you offer a special course for training on Google Apps or do you a, a big part of the way and, and, and the great great thing is that now even our middle schools are starting to adopt the Google Apps um, way of, of doing things so it's becoming easier for the students that move into you know going to the high school level and now are introduced to this you know culture of Google Apps and Google Docs um, but a big part of it is that you know, as we said previously and as you even said just now the kids already have been using a lot of this technology. I would bet you, if you toss in a new student that just has basic computer experience, has been using the web as any other normal student would, has never used Google Apps though, when you toss them into, say, a Google Doc, even if you didn't give them any instruction of how to use it, I would bet you that within about 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes, they would know how to use that product. Kids are kids are a lot smarter these days when it comes to technology, you know, than we think. When, when things used to be difficult, we used to, you know, when I was a student and you know, Microsoft Office was that thing that we had a class called Desktop Publishing, and we had to sit down and learn all the different parts and how the you know Word works and Excel works and Publisher. You know, everything was very rigid because you know technology was the, the learning curve was quite steep mm -hmm. to get into it. Google Docs and Google Apps, Michael, you can chime in it, uh, whenever. Um, but this product is made on the web, it's, it utilizes the cloud entirely, and the interface is, is very simple. I mean, if they've used Word, we'll go into Google Docs next session, but if you've used Word, you can very easily go into Google Docs, because the interface is, is very, uh, it pulls a lot of aspects right from Microsoft Office and, and utilizes it. But it strips it down, takes out all that junk that most of us don't even use, and just makes it accessible to everyone by putting in the things uh, that we need to have. And that's why I, uh, one of the things I said was Google Docs does not have functionality for everyone. It doesn't. But for the 90-95%, it's going to suit them just fine. Okay, so what do you do with new staff? Do you do the same thing, sink or swim? Uh, we, have, we have a, a lot of, uh, we have tech coaches that are within each department that sort of help foster and nurture um, all the new uh, hirees and all the new staff that come in. We have a lot of sessions called Lunch and Learn and, and, and technology little uh, sessions that we put on on Google Apps and the different products throughout the year. So there are many chances where the staff uh, are, can come in and, and, and learn about these things. And one of the things I'm going to go on in the, about in the admin session is you know, how to go ahead and make some of this professional development available to staff members and students so they can go ahead and grasp this technology and start using it um, for themselves. So, so there has to be some kind of training camp component here. I'm not going to say that everyone's just going to pick it up uh, you know, as easily as I may or you may. Um, everyone is at a different level, but on the average, I will say that the Google Apps, the Google Docs products, they are a lot easier to use than what we're used to with traditional software. That barrier has been brought down. And, and Google is always messing with the way things look on that thing. I mean, they all the time. <laughs> and, and every, that every is, I'm looking for something every two weeks. It's like, now, where do I make something spam now? God help you, because it's somewhere. So uh -huh. uh, how do you handle that in the real world? I mean, when you're pushing that out, and it's like, this is the way we've always done this, and it doesn't look that and way. And it's so funny, because we just put on a, a training at the Parkridge Library, uh, our local library, uh, last month, and the, the day of the <laughs> the day of the training, we had all this material prepped, and all these uh, you know, screenshots, and our slides already all set up, um, and the, that same day, they changed, what was the, the interface of Ma uh, Google, Gmail? Got well, pushed out that day? they've been transitioning to a new look, and it's... Yeah. And after they released it, it was optional, and somebody decided five minutes before our presentation to switch the whole organization to the new. No, book. I didn't do that. Yeah, you, you didn't, did. didn't do that. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened because as I'm getting no, ready who? to go, and I and I used the new interface with some of my other accounts, but I had prepared the material for that, so we were in a transition. So it was. Everything was there, like you said. It was just in a little. Basically, place. that goes back to true life, though. I mean, for these kids. Yeah. There's it, change. Well, but, I mean. But if you had Windows 2007 or whatever, it was a static right. format and it was easy to do training. I just always worry about training on this. You, you're having to update your training materials all the time. Every time they 
And I think they. I, I know this was a major overhaul, and I don't think they're probably going to do this very often. But these 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 kind of big changes. Just recently, they had this was probably one of the biggest changes they made to their face in the last two and a half years. Yeah. So this is this doesn't happen very often. Uh, but this whole topic of how Google changes very quickly, it's one of the good things and it's one of the bad things about them. Uh, and, and the nice part about it is the product's always fresh, it's always you know, kept up to date. They, they do listen to what districts are saying. You know, we personally have made some suggestions to how they should change some things and other districts have said the same stuff. And part of this new release, we saw some of those uh, different features get implemented. So they're very receptive. You know, compared to large corporations like Apple or Microsoft, where it might take six years for a, a, a you know a change to get implemented in the software, yeah. Google Google's able to do it on a, you know in a, on a month to month basis. And not only that, but when you refresh your computer or your browser or you log in the next time, that change is there. You don't have to wait for someone like me, like Mike, when are you going to get to my computer to yeah. you know put Office 2010 in? Well, and it's like Microsoft Word. The change from 2003 to 2007 was so it was radical. Yeah. Well, you got to realize. Office is a polished product that's been around decades. Google Docs has been around a few years, so yeah. the changes they're making are, well, are very just has important. So much you don't use, the, right. the yeah. least less you uh, have to have, and that is the exactly it is to use. And that is exactly what a lot of other people say, and that's how I feel as well. You know, Google yeah. Docs is pretty much what every most people need. You know, the few people that don't have the functionality in Docs uh, that they're looking for. Fine, you'll have to revert to using a Windows yeah. system, but that's one out of maybe 20 or 30 people. We switched to apps this year, and I, like you said, it's hard to get people to switch, but I have some teachers that have gone in and, you know, at first they were, well, how am I going to get all my stuff from Word uploaded to Docs? And then I've discovered as they're going through looking at this, they're kind of updating the way they teach. And it's, you know, well, I don't really need this. Anymore. They've been using it because it's there, but they're deciding, well, maybe I could, you know, upgrade that a little, and they're putting more into presentations instead of, you know, less paper. We're not just going to hand out the assignments and do it. They're kind of upgrading how they're teaching, so they're really kind of going more for this as they look back. Yes, it's kind of a pain, but I think it kind of refreshes them as teachers, too. And, and, I, and I really think that the well, what a lot of districts call the one-to-one -one classroom, this is here to stay. I really don't think that we're going to be looking back and changing our ways and moving back to a way of, you know, solely textbooks, you know, yeah. and, and, and mere computer labs. I think this, and it's already been starting, you know, kids are bringing their smartphones every single day. So pretty much, you know, it's fine and funny because, you know, they're all talking about one-to-one -one classrooms over by us, but it pretty much is a one-to-one -one because everyone kid has a computer which is a smartphone in their pocket with them. So we're looking at a two-to-one <laughs> you know, a, a setup already. So, um, and, and a lot of, large part of it is, as you said, it is a culture change. It is difficult to get people to change their ways. You know, teachers that are so comfortable with all those lesson plans they made in Microsoft Office or, you know, different platforms and, you know, saying, why do I need to change, uh, you know, my content or my material uh, yeah. to match this technology? But Docs is so easy. The presentation is so easy that. I mean, I'm finding teachers that didn't like the other stuff are willing to do this because, it is it's, very because simple. it's simple. Yeah, this whole presentation we did just right here. All, all our presentations actually here uh, for the two days are in Google Presentations. And they really like it because it's all in one place. They don't have to remember where they put the document okay. on the server, on the, you know, they're kind of, it's there. And for example, another nice part is, so this presentation, once we once we leave here, we'll be able to share this with you. We won't have to email it to everyone. All we're going to say is, it's we're going to we can share it out on the site or put it into a, a doc and make a link to it, and you can view it online at any time. You don't have to have that raw PowerPoint file that's you know a few six seven megs in size. You can view this anywhere you are, and if we make changes to it ever, you'll see those changes get implemented. You don't have to worry. Which is the latest version? Is this one later or is this one later? That's all been blown out of the water. Yeah. If I can just comment on the, I guess the, the use or adoption, um, learning this, um, you know, look at it two ways. I mean, one of my primary responsibilities is training. If we have a lot more Chromebooks, I can concentrate more on that. But, um, you know, looking at it from both angles, uh, you, you have the students who are more willing. They're not afraid to click on things. They're not afraid to try things. They're used to using the technology, and uh, it's, it's more organic with them, I think, and they tend to figure things out 
work with each other. Right? You know, the adults are you know are a little bit different. But the thing with the students that you know that I always caution people about is making the assumption that all the students know how to do everything. Because what I find, especially having two teenagers and a nine-year-old, <laughs> is that they're using the technology for communication, for entertainment, and, and, the, and the things they want to do. They're not using the technology to be productive, to do the things that we want them to do. <laughs> so it's awesome because they're, they're learning the technology. They don't have this fear, or most of them don't, that us adults tend to have, and that's why they're digital natives and we're digital immigrants. <laughs> uh, so it's a little harder for us. But with the adults, uh, so I don't know that we've done much professional development with the students. I mean, I'd really like to. We have some student leaders in that area that we'd like to, but you know, that's something we'll get to hopefully in the future. But you know, with adults, when we switched over, we had a lot of professional development. It's embedded into our school year. We have regular professional development days. We have teachers dedicated to that who plan that along with myself and our assistant principal. Uh, we have a couple of other administrators. We're kind of guiding as a team. We're guiding, you know, okay, where do we want to go? We're surveying the staff. We're looking at what we've done. So we'll have, we're always adding new things, but we're also oftentimes, like with the lunch and learns, we're offering things over and over again. And of course, you know, uh, as much as we can, we're willing to meet with the staff if there's a new staff member to do some, you know, one-on-one -on -one training. But a lot of the things are pretty intuitive. So once you get people going, uh, and the, what I like about the products is if you learn how to do something in one product, it's often very similar, the exact same thing. And, you know, if I learn how to share a document, I can also share a presentation. It's the exact same process, so I only have to learn it once. And just a little story about sharing. My daughter, uh, I'll share, share about sharing. Uh, my daughter, who is nine, uh, and, and they don't use, they don't have accounts, they don't uh, use Google Apps or anything in her school, but I do, and she comes over and she's like, oh, I got, uh, you know, I have to write this or I have to do something. I'm like, okay, let's log into your account. I send up the account for her and, you know, let's do that in Google Docs because I'm divorced. So when she's at her mom's house, she's at my house, she doesn't have to worry about where her doc is or, heaven forbid, I give her a flash drive and then, you know, she <laughs> loses that or something and all her files on it. But she calls me a couple of weeks ago and she goes, um, I know I can share a document. How do, how do I do that? Great, you know, she wants to share a document. <laughs> so I'm like, well, you see a little share button, you click on that, you type in, you know, uh, mom's email address, my email address, or whatever, and then you click share. And about 45 seconds later, boom, from Jessica, Christmas wish list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so but that's, that's, you know, that's the way kids are. They, how, now suddenly she's got an idea. I know, I know I can do this, and I, I want to know how to do this, and, and then she picked it up, so now she's learned a, a new skill. So. She's, uh, she's getting into the Google Apps world. But yeah, with the kids, I think it's more organic, more natural. We just have to guide them to use the tools the, the way they're going to need to use them when they you know, go out to the real world. It's funny that you mentioned that about the students uh, and, and you know, how familiar they are with it. We actually, uh, our tech intern uh, who's very familiar with, with Google Apps, um, you know, she's a, a senior in high school, and she actually uh, sent out a survey to all of the uh, student, the whole student body. Uh, she was given that ability by the uh, assistant principal. And she asked, she wanted to put on a training on Google Apps for the other students. And she asked to put in the survey, uh, you know, different things like how familiar are you with Google Apps? You know, what different things would you like to learn about? And it was really surprising as I looked at the results with her uh, just a few weeks ago. And to find out how many kids, you know, put in there, I'm very, very familiar with apps. I don't need any kind of training, you know. And this was probably about 60 to 70 percent of the respondents, you know, said I'm, I'm very familiar with at least, you know, Gmail Docs, the two core products that we're using right now. Um, maybe they need a little bit of polishing on Calendar or, uh, you know, Google, how to use Google Sites. They are a little more advanced products. Um, but, you know, what we thought was going to be, you know, a, a blowout in terms of kids wanting or, or, or yearning for all this uh, training on it, most of them already said, I'm, I'm pretty familiar. You know, I like to do this or I like to do that, but I'm already using this on a daily basis. So they are really adopting this technology and, and using it, at least at, at the high school that I'm uh, at primarily uh, in the district. And one of the other things that I'm going to go over in the admin session uh, with those that are there in terms of 
the way that this product's going to trickle down, uh, primarily Google Apps, how are people really going to start adopting it and using it? Well, it first has to come from the top down. It has to come from the higher ups first. And that is one of the good examples that we're setting, you know, at least at our school, at Maine South High School. Um, our, administra our administrators, our principals, our higher ed department chairs, um, they are using Google Apps and Google Docs for not only, yes? Our, I've hooked our superintendent secretary. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because she's the one sharing out all the documents mm -hmm. and stuff, so it's not so much the superintendent, but it's the secretary. Mm -hmm. I hooked her, and then I also got our labs all on the you know Google Calendar. Sure. So it's kind of if you do some key things where you force everyone's <laughs> hand, they have to go there to get it, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, that superintendent secretary was pretty slick. And nothing convinces someone more than oh, I can go online and I can click and I can reserve a lab and I don't have to worry about walking mm -hmm. over to a lab. You know, or they want the requisitions and stuff. Read my email, and yeah, yeah, that's very yeah. powerful. And just to kind of go along with that, as far as the teachers go, I think, you know, obviously you need to learn the tools, and we're constantly doing that. Our, our professional development has evolved from, you know, how do I share a document to how do I really use this tool or these tools in the classroom so that I can make a difference. You know, we don't want to constantly be learning just how do I use the document, but it's how do I change the way I teach. And I think that's that's what's fundamental, and that's it's not an easy thing to do, you know. But that's that's hopefully what we're going to get started with here today with the Google Apps. And in our district, I mean, at least in my school, I'm seeing Google Apps being used on a daily basis in, in many different things. You know, we're doing things from you know the, the assistant principal sends out his daily staff bulletin, and he's using Google Sites as the platform for putting all this information in. So we have an archive and record of every day's announcements that come out. To all the teachers that have already have classroom websites set up in Google Sites, so all their different class periods have a different site they go to. They post their homework assignments already on there. They have a, a calendar for the for the class. What day's tests are going to be on? Links to all the different websites that they want kids to be going to for different topics that they're learning in the in the class. Um, to you know different departments in our school that are using Google Sites to. Um, organize all their information. Our, our actual district libraries run on Google Sites now. Um, our Maine South Athletics homepage is all on Google Sites. Um, so when you start having this adoption at all the different levels and people start saying, hey, this tool, you know, these tools really are useful. We can do a lot of great things with these uh, different products. That's when people start, you know, finally taking them and saying, okay, well, how can I use them for my purposes? How can I use them in my classroom? How can I use Google Forms to send out a survey? How can I collect information with Google Docs amongst many different students? So, um, you know, it does begin at the higher level. The teachers, the administrators, you know, need to be uh, on board, need to have the buy-in, and that's how the students are going to then take up this product and, and start working.